You know, this isn't exactly what we what we were expecting, but this is kind of what we asked for. You know, we reached out to the UFC and said that uh, you know, we were in the gym, that we were you know standing at a good baseline, and that we were ready if anything opened up in July. And then the UFC let us know, hey, listen, we'll reach out next week. You know, we're trying to figure everything out. And, um, so at that point, we were kind of at like a meat and potatoes you know, training schedule. And then Monday morning, I, you know, I talked to Calvin. I said, hey, listen, you know, we're gonna start ramping up a little bit just in case one of these guys pop open. And so we had actually already made a plan on Tuesday to start really ramping up the conditioning because you know we're in a good spot but we just want to be ready for mid-July if something happened and then uh, that was Monday night we got the call and they offered us uh, you know Dan Ige and like I said it wasn't the fight that we you know we wanted we were you know we're trying to fight those top five guys but you know it's a good opportunity and um, you know you earn title shots by getting big moment opportunities and performing and uh, you know they're they're giving us a second chance it's our eighth fight in the UFC they're giving us a second opportunity to be a main event headline of cards Obviously, it's a big card being on Fight Islands. So there's a lot of eyes on it. So, you know, so we're just excited about the opportunity. And, um, you know, Calvin's finally putting a stamp that, you know, letting the world know that he is a top five guy. The fight, the fight business is crazy. You know, you have some fighters that in the position that we're in would, would sit tight and hope for an injury and uh, jump in last minute to replace the top five guy and, um, you know, kind of go that route. And, you know, Calvin's not that kind of guy. You know, he, he, he wants to fight the toughest guys out there. Right now, the toughest guy that didn't have a fight was Dan Ige. He's got a lot of hype behind him, six wins in a row. There's not a lot of guys in the top ten that want to fight him because the upside, you know, people can argue that it's not necessarily there fighting a guy that's ranked number 11 and that, you know, we're probably going to be a huge favorite against. Um, but at the end of the day, Calvin's always had that mentality of uh, I'm going to double down on myself and, uh, and I'm going to earn the spot. You know, so we go out and, you know, I gotta think this makes the fans love us more is the fact that we wanted a quick turnaround, we're willing to take a risky fight that maybe doesn't have the upside that a top five guy would, has a little bit more downside than a top five guy would, but uh, that's the kind of guy Calvin is. Like He's gonna go out there, he's gonna put a fist in his face, and he's gonna earn that next big moment. So, uh, you know, the fans love that stuff. They, they like a, you know, a hero, a guy that's not scared, a guy that's not playing politics, and you know, we're gonna put you know, we're going to put a stamp on that win and, and show everybody that we're a five-round fighter and that, you know, we're a true headliner and we're ready to take those top five guys on. For a fight on the 15th of next month. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, you'd always like to have more time, but Calvin's one of those guys that he's, he's always in the gym. You know, May 9th, we fought Jeremy Stevens, and he was back in the gym the next week. He was training, and, and we had a good baseline. I had to uh, have him go out to the PI at the beginning of June and get a... Uh, some evals done with the strength and conditioning team and the, uh, the physical therapist and all that stuff out there and they, they really loved where he's at. So when we got the call so the on the 15th for a five round fight, I called them and they're like, hell yeah, he's ready. Like he can go and, and, and you know, so really the first calls I made was obviously after we figured out we're taking the fight and we worked on the contracts and all that. It was uh, to, you know, those those role players like the the PI staff for to get a new strength and conditioning program, the PT to get everything in line for that, and then um, all the coaches just to build a, you know, because the pandemic's ending right now, sort of, so things are starting to open back up. So a lot of the coaches that we had at our disposal on our time schedule for the Stevens fight, you know, now they're kind of back to work a little bit. They they got some other schedules going on. So, you know, I would say we got the call at 8:45 on Monday night and. By Tuesday morning at like 11, we had had a, a whole schedule planned out for the next three and a half weeks. And, um, you know, it was a little stressful for a little bit, just trying to balance everybody's schedules and make everything work, but make it in a manner that was also easy on Calvin and, and made sense. But, uh, you know, that's why we work with some of the best coaches around, you know, so the New Cartel, you know, you might call it a team, but really it's a, it's a lifestyle and, uh, you know, people put up or shut up, and all these guys are putting up, so I, I couldn't be happier about where we're at. You know, we're different than other camps. A lot of other camps, they have the same people in the room kind of every camp. It's uh, the same practice schedule, the same coaches, the same everything. And, uh, you know, we're kind of doing it differently. You know, we're the, we're the bad news bears of MMA, and, um, you know, we get a really tight circle in the New England Cartel, and, and we have a few people that are there every camp. And then we, we bring in other people to that make sense to bring yeah, in. You know, Kyle Bokniak is a is a perfect uh, mimic for uh, for Dan Ige. You know, same height, same reach. Kyle's you know got a bunch of fights in the UFC. He's uh, you know he's got good wrestling. He's not afraid to be aggressive on the feet. He's got the you know everything looks good. So it's good to get him back in the mix. It's kind of feeling like UFC 220 all over again. You know, when we had that uh, that great camp with all, all three of them. And then, obviously, Rob coming back from the knee surgery. And uh, with the pandemic being closed down, he's allowed to be at a lot of the sessions. So it's really good. The energy in the room is a, lot, is a lot different. It's good seeing Rob get back into it. And then him and Calvin just keep working on that synergy that they have. And, 
you know, uh, helping each other out, and and then obviously the same coaches. You know, we got uh, Jake Manini, the Muay Thai coach. He's coming out to, um, to to the fight with us to corner, so he'll be the fourth corner since we're the main event, and then it'll be you know me, Rob, and uh, Neto again. So you know, it's the same team. We're adding one because we're the main event, but you know, it's. We're just excited, man. We're, we're we're blessed to have a lot of people around that are willing to chip in and and help and uh, not do it to be on camera or to make money. They're, they're, they're really just they want to help these guys and everything else. Kind of works itself out. It's a quick turnaround from the, the Jeremy Stevens fight, but you know all I've, all I've seen is growth from him. You know he's um, he's just getting better and it's scary, man. He's he's uh, like reaching his full potential and um, you know uh, quick turnarounds mean you know he, he just doesn't think about it more. So he's gonna go out there and just react and uh, put this. Do the way. Yeah. That was a big moment, you know. He's uh, he's second main event, you know. Unfortunately, the first one didn't go our way, but uh, we got the opportunity to get it back and um, put on a show for the fans. You know, we got to fight Ireland. I'm excited about that. Uh, never been out there to Dubai, so uh, yeah, you know, it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be a uh, different. But you know, so what? You know, the, the first fight was weird as hell, but we're gonna get yeah. that. And um, yeah, I'm excited for this one. At first sparring after surgery, shit, felt great. Got to move around with Calvin. You know, oh, yeah. the best in the world. It felt great. It felt smooth. Uh, I didn't do as much, you know, kicking or wrestling, but I uh, got my hands going. And you know, I'm excited to get back, man. The 35 was fucked, and I can't wait to get back and uh, put my hands on somebody. Pumped to be headlining my second UFC main event, this time taking place at uh, July 15th in Abu Dhabi on Yaz Island, Fight Island as everyone's calling it. And um, I got a tough opponent, Dan Ige, ahead of me, six fight win streak, and excited to come off uh, you know, a big win over Jeremy Stevens. We were one of the first events, uh, you know, still going through the pandemic. And here we are with another big moment opportunity. Uh, being one of the only events in town and uh, get an opportunity to put on a big show for everybody tuning in. This is one of my quicker turnarounds fighting for the UFC and uh, opportunity doesn't wait for anybody and momentum's either working for you against you every day and uh, my foot's on the gas right now. Yeah, getting Rob Font back in the gym and uh, training with us has been great. Uh, he looked real good today. Uh, definitely good to have him back on the mats. He's been uh, a big help this camp and, and we definitely missed him last one with the Stevens but uh, you know, we're all full steam ahead. He's excited for a comeback towards the end of the year. We got Kyle Bokniak in the building, helped me out, being a, a Dan Ige double. And, uh, you know, just good to get the, the 220 boys back in town and uh, getting the work in, man. We got some big fights coming up and uh, we want to put North, the Northeast on the map.